The Steam Deck just hit a groundbreaking milestone. New Dead Space Remake info is coming soon, AMD has a fix for a major CPU issue, and much more on Today in Gaming. Hey guys, Level Cap here. Valve's portable gaming PC console hybrid, the Steam Deck, just hit a monumental milestone. Apex Legends has been added to the official Steam Deck verified game list. And this is the first AAA multiplayer game using easy anti-cheat that's officially supported on Steam Deck. And while that could be hard to understand the significance of, at first glance, it's massive for the future of Valve's device. One of the bigger hurdles of Steam Deck is that SteamOS, the operating system which Steam Deck runs on, is built on Linux, which developed have historically not supported particularly well. Getting the support from a developer like Respawn with a multiplayer title as massive as Apex could open the floodgates to even bigger titles embracing the device. Call of Duty, Battlefield, Rainbow Six, Valorant, GTA 5 Online, and dozens of the world's most popular multiplayer games are still officially unsupported on the Steam Deck. However, Danny on PC recently discovered that Battlefield 5 works, including multiplayer on the Steam Deck. So despite developers not officially supporting their games, well, there's a good chance that many of them will still work with some workarounds tweaking here and there and some extra work perhaps done by the community to optimize the games. It's still too soon to say for sure what the future of Valve Steam Deck means for PC and multi-gaming in general, but the fact that they're having a hard time keeping up with sales demand right now bodes well for the interest in the device. What do you guys think about Valve Steam Deck so far? We know not many gamers have gotten their hands on one yet, but based on the news surrounding it, do you think the Steam Deck is going to live up to the hype or will interest die out over time? Let us know in the comments. The upcoming Dead Space remake will get another showcase this Friday. The project was revealed last year and marked the franchise's return after it and its developers Visceral Games were shut down following Dead Space 3's disappointing sales. Since the franchise has such an incredible legacy, gamers are very excited to see how the remake is shaping up. The brief glimpse of what we've gotten so far is very promising. The goal is to recreate Dead Space with modern visuals and gameplay while fleshing out the original vision for the game. Despite its age, Dead Space holds up incredibly well. You could even argue that a remaster at this point isn't necessary. But the original game's developers were forced to cut many things like enhanced environmental art, additional levels, and story elements due to technical constraints. The remake aims to restore these elements and present them as intended. Friday's showcase of the game will dive into the audio development. We'll probably get a new look at gameplay, but don't expect anything finished looking at this point. AMD is working on a fix for stuttering caused by enabling FTPM on their CPUs. In layman's terms, TPM is a security tool that can run either on your CPU or a dedicated motherboard module. FTPM is AMD's CPU firmware solution. Windows 11 requires this feature and unfortunately, AMD's implementation causes system-wide stuttering for many users. The current solution is to either disable FTPM and tweak Windows 11 with third-party tools or buy a discrete TPM TPM module for your motherboard. And of course, you can always just stick with Windows 10 until the issue is resolved. AMD are working on a BIOS update that will fix the stuttering. It'll be ready for distribution to motherboard manufacturers in early May. You can probably expect supported motherboards to get beta updates soon after AMD releases their fix, with stable BIOS updates coming a few weeks later. Action brawler Gotham Knights finally has a release date. It was delayed last year to sometime this year, and a recent leak had suggested an April launch date. But we don't have to guess anymore as the devs have officially announced the game is launching on October 25th, 2022. People also noticed that there was a playtest briefly available on Steam last week. Not much in particular came from that leak, but its existence could suggest that a closed beta is coming before launch. Gotham Knights builds on Batman Arkham series by throwing in co-op and a new story set after Bruce Wayne's death. Stress testing the online system seems like a pretty logical step towards launch, however the devs haven't announced any playtest officially. Dying Light 2 got a massive update that fixes some of the game's biggest bugs. A laundry list of other improvements are included in the patch, but here are some highlights. Death loops, where you can die and reload multiple times until you close the game, has been fixed. Players falling through the ground in co-op has been fixed. Performance across the board has been improved, particularly stuttering caused by shader caching when you first launch the game after a GPU update. 
the PlayStation 5 exclusive roguelike shooter Returnal is getting a free update on the 22nd that adds a new survival mode and online co-op. Players will be able to join or host public and private games one other friend can join. You'll be tethered together to prevent game-breaking issues like one player going to a new area alone. If one player dies, the other can revive them. Progress is based on the lobby's host. The new survival mode is called the Tower of Sisyphus and pits you against endless waves of enemies as you try to climb the tower. The higher you get, the harder the challenge. There's also a boss battle between tower phases that gets harder and harder the higher you go. Unfortunately, the co-op mode isn't available for this survival mode. Nintendo, Bungie, and PlayStation are the latest game companies to ban sales of their products in Russia over the country's invasion of Ukraine. The international response to Russia's actions is expected to result in them defaulting on their credit within days. They've been heavily sanctioned by the US and European Union, so there's a good chance that even if some of these companies wanted to continue selling their games to Russia, it might be illegal, incredibly difficult, or just very expensive. A gender discrimination lawsuit against PlayStation is gained steam. Eight more women at the company have joined a lawsuit filed by a former IT employee in late 2021. They said that they experienced sexual harassment verbally, physically, and online from their co-workers. In addition, they also raised allegations of bullying, gender bias, and roadblocks preventing investigations of their claims. The developers of Space Sim Elite Dangerous just made a shocking announcement. Development has been entirely cancelled for its console versions. The game's latest expansion Odyssey was a total disaster for the game. It launched with severe bugs, major performance problems, and lacked the depth of content players were expecting. It introduced Space Legs, aka the ability to finally walk around on foot in-game along with weapon-based FPS combat and missions. On paper, anyway, it was the game's most significant expansion since launch, but the state that the expansion launched in still haunts the base game 10 major updates later. It currently has a mixed recent review score on Steam, indicating players are unhappy. Console development has been cancelled, so the developers can devote all of their resources and attention to the PC version, future expansions, and updates. In general, things seem to be going quite smoothly for Elite Dangerous until this expansion. Hopefully, refocusing development to one platform will help the devs get it back on track. The studio CEO said in the announcement that drop console support wasn't an easy choice to make. Dedicated player communities for the game are incredibly frustrated by the decision since they've been built around supporting players on all platforms for years. Before we get to our final story today, let us know what you think about the Steam Deck. We'd love to hear what you think it means for the future of PC gaming. Leave your thoughts in the comments. There might be a light at the end of the tunnel for Ubisoft's long-delayed pirate game Skull and Bones. It started as an expansion in 2013 for Assassin's Creed Black Flag, but was eventually spun off into its own project. From there, it's been delayed multiple times. The original launch date was at the end of 2018, and four years later, we finally have some good news. Ubisoft have opened up insider playtesting for the game. That means select Ubisoft gamers will get hands-on time with current development builds. Ubisoft expects the game to launch by this time next year at the latest. As for why this project has, or at least had, so much hype surrounding it, the naval combat in Black Flag is considered a highlight of the entire Assassin's Creed franchise. It's a gameplay element that has now been repeated in multiple Assassin's Creed games. A dedicated game built around that naval combat that fleshes it out into a full open world title with co-op and PvP sounds like a slam dunk, especially considering just how much of a smash hit C of Thieves has been. And that wraps it up for today in gaming. As always guys, thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.